hey, everybody. Welcome back to My View on the View radio broadcast. Thank you so much for joining me. This is a community here on YouTube for people who are still watching The View every single day, just like me. We get together here and we just talk about anything surrounding the show. Uh, currently, past things that have anything, anything. I want to talk to you all about Rosie. Come on in. Let's get started. Come on. Well, guys, thanks for being here again. I appreciate all of y'all. Thank you so much for your support and listening. Don't forget that before you click off the broadcast to give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And if you feel like you really like these types of chats and you enjoy uh, just kind of communing with others who are still hanging in there with ABC's The View, uh, go ahead and take that extra step and subscribe to our YouTube family here. Well, guys, I want to talk to you about something. Um, As you probably have already heard, because uh, it started trending earlier this morning, Rosie O'Donnell is out speaking again about the show. And if you have followed Rosie, if you know anything about anytime Rosie talks about the show, you already know that she never really has anything really positive to say about the show. This instance was no different. So today, Tuesday, April 18th, there was a new episode of Brooke Shields' podcast uh, called What Now with Brooke Shields that uploaded today in which she was interviewing Rosie and she was talking with Rosie about how Rosie has navigated all the controversy in her career. And I will tell you, it's a great episode because Rosie does give some great life pointers about just how to deal with things that happen in life. Um, But of course, she asked her about the view. And I want you to listen with me as Rosie goes on this this long thing. Okay, it was over three minutes. Okay, actually, she went longer than that. I just capped it at over three minutes, but I think three and 15. But um, let's just listen to what Rosie has to say. And then I'm going to be back and I'm going to talk to you about what Rosie doesn't talk about. So let's take a listen and I'll be right back. You go to the view. Yes. You get to have opinions. Yes. What was that like? Wow. It was, you know what? I grew up playing sports. I'm a very big tomboy. I played baseball. I played basketball. I was on every team. I was the captain. You know, I was very into supporting other women, Title IX, pass the ball. You get the layup. You pass. You run. You know, it was teamwork. That's where I was going in. So I went in there with a teamwork attitude. But, you know, Elizabeth Hasselbeck was on there and and Bill Getty was the producer of an all woman's talk show with supposedly a woman's voice was a man, an old cis white man, Republican, who uh, was against everything that I believed in and stood for. And he loved Elizabeth Hasselbeck and would go into her little dressing room and and give her notes and talking points of the Republican press that they would release daily. She had the talking points. And, you know, I was trying to get her to feel more than to fact. I'm like, but what do you feel about this? You know? And um, I I tried. Here's what I did. When I took the job, I said to myself, I'm going to love her no matter what. I took her to her first Broadway show. I took her kids to see the Nickelodeon shows with me and my kids. I had her to my house with her husband. They swam in my pool. I thought we were friends. In, in a civil kind of way. And then one day on the show, she kind of threw me under the bus and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? And I wa- finished the show, got my coat, walked out and said, I am not going back. And I didn't until a few years later when they asked me to come back and, and Whoopi was on it. And, you know, it, it, it we clashed in, in ways that I was shocked by. That takes balls, all of it, I have to say. <laughs> Do you think that they, you were made to be the villain in all of that? In some ways I was, but it was all right. You know, I, I think I had produced my own show. I was the solo boss. And here I was not having any power to make decisions. There would be, you know, the, the Rory Kennedy documentary about Abu Ghraib was out about the torture that we did as a country, how we sanctioned it. And Bill Getty wanted to do the new fall lipstick colors. And I'm like, we're not going to talk. And then, you know, Bill Cosby was a big topic. And I wanted to discuss Bill Cosby and Whoopi did not. Do you regret doing that show? No, I don't have any regrets in terms of like career and show business like that. I I feel like each thing I learned something, but I know this is not the best use of my talent to get in a show where I have to argue and defend, you know, basic principles of humanity and kindness. I don't know. It, it, it was it, it was not something that I would ever do again, you know. And and when she died, Barbara and I, uh, you know, got along uh, after we, we went out to dinner. We knew each other way before I did that show, before she asked me to do it. Um, and we remained, you know, friendly towards the end. And, um, 
you know, I, I forgave her because she was older and she did the best that she could with, you know, what she had to work with. And, yeah. um, but it's nothing I'd want to do again. I could say that. Uh, yes. <laughs> Something that strikes me about your. Yes. Okay. Now guys, let me just say this. Okay. Because this is actually part one of our conversation tomorrow. Part two will be uploaded where you're going to hear me reading some excerpts from Ramin Satuta's New York Times bestselling book, Ladies Who Punch, The Explosive Inside Story of the View. There's a section in the book because the original book was divided into three sections. The uh, one section is called Rosie's View. And I'm going to read to you some things that we're never going to hear from Rosie. We're never going to hear these things. OK, but let, let's let let me let me back up and, and talk about what we just heard there. First of all, I will say this. If you've been with me for years, you know that anytime Rosie comes out and she starts talking, I always say the same thing. And I'm going to say it again now. I don't have a problem with Rosie coming out and sharing what she believes was her experience on the show, her perception of things. I mean, I have a right to share my experiences with people and come from my vantage point and my perception, just as you do, just as Rosie does. I don't have a problem with that. I really don't. What I have a problem with is that every single time, although I love Rosie and I think she's talented, I mean, I follow her on social media, media, not because I'm a vlogger about The View because she ain't on there anymore. I follow her because I love her TikToks, <laughs> okay? But um, I will just say that what I have a problem with is that Rosie always makes it seem as if she's the victim. She's the victim. They didn't understand me. This is what I tried to do. They did this. They said that. I was trying to defend basic humanity and kindness on the show and I got tired of it. Okay. But Rosie never tells how verbally abusive she was, how they hated her. Not the, not, well, some of the women hated her, but mostly the staff behind the scenes. She never talks about the emotional and mental damage she did to people. She never tells the truth, the true story. Okay. You know, in situations like this, I feel like, you know, what Rosie could be saying in some of these incidents when she's asked is that, well, I don't want to talk about it. That's one thing, you know, it was a long time ago. I've moved on. Or she can just simply say, you know, hey, listen, I wasn't my the best version of myself at that time. And a lot of people I worked with, they weren't the best versions of themselves either. So we both made a lot of mistakes. You know, that's an easy way to say it. But when you hear Rosie, whether it's Howard Stern, she's talking to, whether it's, um, this girl, no matter who it is, R Rosie never tells the truth. Okay. So what I think is prudent because people seem to believe Rosie because they haven't read Ramin's book. They don't know that before Nicole Wallace, okay, went to HR to report that she was intimidated and fearful of Rosie. A lot of people don't know that way before, years before Eliz uh, uh, Nicole went to HR, there were many, many, many people that had gone to HR. I mean, listen, Nicole Wallace wasn't even a thought in anybody's mind. She wasn't, she wasn't even hired on the show back then. Okay. But a lot of people went to HR and because under Rosie, the ratings rose 17%. They didn't do anything about it. They knew, listen, she was so verbally and mentally abusive to one of the producers. This man had to take one month off from work. He had a, the doctor, his doctor advised him, you know, you're going to die if you don't take off work. That's how bad it was under Rosie behind the scenes. And when he came back, what the executives agreed to is that he and Rosie would never be in the same room. That's how bad it was. Okay. So listen, I'm going to read something to you right now. Just a little bit of something. This is on page 156. This is the hardback version, which is the first version for those of you who don't know who want to get the book or who want to listen to it on audible. Ramin has uh, two editions of his book. The first edition edition, excuse me, came out in hand in hardback in 2019. There was an updated revised edition, or I should just say updated that came out in 2020. Okay. It was paperback and it had a bunch of new interviews. It talked about, you know, a little bit about Megan, but not a whole lot. All of that because the first book also mentions Megan in the in the very end. And so um, if your page 156 doesn't say what I'm saying, you probably have the updated version or whatnot. But at any rate, on page 156, I want to read this to you. This is just something that is here. 
Rosie refused to wear an earpiece, which the producers used to communicate with the talent during the live show. Rosie thought it destroyed their ability to be spontaneously, uh, to spontaneously interact. And she urged the other co-hosts to join her boycott. Rosie would tell most of the staff how frustrated she was with Mark Gentile, who was the uh, one of the producers there for whom she falsely made up a diagnosis of autism. So she went around telling people this guy had autism. He did not have autism. And one of the things you'll read here about uh, various people who talked to Ramin because he spoke to over 150 people for his book is that Rosie had a habit of doing this. She would do it to herself. She said, and let me just, let me just, let me see if I can find it. Well, you know what? We'll say that to part two, but I'll just tell you this. Rosie would make up all kinds of mental health conditions for herself. So like, I mean, they said it was so bad that she used to do this so much that people really never quite knew what was wrong with Rosie because one day she'd come in and say, oh, like I'm going to make this up. Oh, I have bipolar. And then like next week, something would be going on. She'd say, oh, you know, I have, you know, I don't know, whatever. You just name it. Okay. Some mental health condition. And it's, it got to a point where it's like, what is wrong with Rosie? And listen, we all know that Rosie had a very terrible childhood. She was sexually, sexually abused. Her mom and dad had a very dysfunctional relationship. Their relationship with their children were, was also dysfunctional. And that affected her well into her adult years until finally she got medicated and stabilized. I mean, Rosie even says here uh, to Ramin that she should have been hospitalized at one point because she understands. See, Rosie knows her behavior was off the chain, but see, it's more difficult to own up to that. It's easy to try to pretend that everything was everyone else's fault. And so at any rate, guys, like I said, on part two, I'm going to go into some specific examples, even how she treated SC Cup. I mean, we're just going to go into some things that he has here. Okay. And so be sure that you uh, have your notifications set to all so that when part two uh, comes out and is made live tomorrow, you'll be able to hear it all, especially if you didn't read the book. Now, if you want to get the book or the updated version or just listen to it on audible check the links in the comment section okay i'll put the amazon links there for you but the bottom line as i get ready to let you go is this what no one can take away from rosie is that she is talented nobody can take that away from her i can't either what no one can take away from rosie is that she knows what works in television i mean her show the rosie o show was highly successful but did you know that rosie went through over four, excuse me, seven, seven. Let me get the number right. Over seven producers in four months at her own show. See, everybody can't be bad. See, that's the thing. When everybody is bad, it's not everybody, it's us. And as I wind up the commentary, that's what I want you to get out of our conversation today. You know, sometimes I make the views table relatable, relatable to our everyday lives. And I will tell you that If you and I are going through our life like Rosie did for a great part of her life, you know, Rosie's, uh, I believe Rosie's in her 60s now, early 60s. um, And it seems that things have changed. But, you know, that's a long time. Yes, she is in her 60s because I was listening to the broadcast with Brooke and she said she's in the third half of her life, 60 and on. Um, But, you know, so much of her life prior to that was hellish, even with her children, you know. But when we're going through life and guys, we really believe that everybody has a problem. Like I couldn't get along at that job because of Bob. Well, that job I had to leave because of Jim. Well, that job over there I had to to leave because of Susan. Well, that job I had to leave over there because of Chrissy. When, when that's always our attitude, guys, we've got to, to, to come to the understanding that we are the problem. And if we really want to have a good life, a healthy life, a healthy emotional life, mental health. If we want to have good relationships, loving partnerships, we must understand that we have to take ownership for our part in the dysfunctional relationships and the destruction of relationships. If every time something goes down and we're always having to point the finger outside of ourselves, we're going to have the same results that Rosie had. I mean, most of Rosie's, and she talks about it, most of Rosie's relationships, not just her romantic relationships, but her, her working relationships, they were fraught uh, with, 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 with turmoil more and anger and out, violent outburst, violent emotional outburst. And I mean, just all kinds of stuff because Rosie didn't have herself under control. And, and she was so talented that to a lot of, to, a, to, for a long time, people just put up with it. You know, they tried their best to bear it, um, but it got to a point 
um, that some of these people just couldn't any longer. Some of these people got sick, not just the guy I'm telling you about who had to take off a month, but other people got physically ill because they say when Rosie would come into the room, you, you know, your stomach would just clench up because you didn't know what to expect. She was just that, you don't know, is she going to have a, a violent outburst today? When violent, not, she wouldn't like do anything physically to people, but just like, just explode verbally on people. Okay. Like, let me read this to you and then I'm gonna let you go. Um, Rosie's first day as the moderator, um, one of the producers speaks to Ramin and this is what he says in the minutes before this is page 153 in the minutes before the show, Rosie paced backstage. She'd secure Jessica Simpson as the first guest, a big celebrity in 2006, but the producer had reshuffled the audience so that the teenage groupies were all seated seated near the stage to watch the musical performance by Simpson. Rosie was worried the crowd was too young to root for her. This is what she said to the producer, and I'm quoting here. Where are my people? Where are the fatties? Rosie spoke like this all the time, all the time. I mean, she'd have all kinds of names for people. And so the producer says to, to, to Ramin, of course, I didn't know what to say. I never even thought of that. Um, And so, you know, listen, the bottom line is that we can be talented like Rosie. We can have gifts from God like Rosie has. But if we don't get ourselves together, and you know what I mean by that, heal from our past, heal from the emotional wounds through through therapy or, you know, what have you, guys, we're going to have some really tough, tough times. And we're going to have some very... Uh, we're going to leave a string of bitterness behind us. People who like several people in this book said they hated Rosie. Um, uh, her, uh, you know, we know all the, the cr- crazy stuff that's going on with her children. You know, when your children speak to the media and say they hate you, you know, see now, see, that was your child who lived in the home with you. Now, these are people who work with you and said they hated you, too. So, see, somebody's got a problem and, and that somebody is Rosie. OK, or had. OK, but so, guys, listen. As I let you go, I want to say that um, all of us need to continue work to work on ourselves. None of us are perfect. None of us will ever be perfect. But let me say this. If you really um, have some things you need to work on and you feel like you can't do it alone and you don't want to do it alone or you don't know how to do it. Listen, don't let it take you five or 10 years to to get things straightened out. Get therapy and listen, I will tell you if you'll check my code in the comment section with BetterHelp, you get 10 percent off your first month of therapy. Don't try to work these things out yourself. And you'll be surprised just how cheap BetterHelp is. It's nothing like uh, what people would think. Therapy is not as expensive as it used to be back in the day when I was, uh, you know, a young adult. It's, it's totally different. OK, so check out all those links in the in the comment section. And listen, guys, don't forget to have your, as I said, notification set to all so that you can get part two of this as I go into some specific examples of just how difficult Rosie was behind the scenes. Thanks so much for tuning in. Leave your thoughts about her comments to Brooke Shields in the comment section, and I'll talk to you on the next broadcast.